So now we are going into this session uh, with a book launch. So you can see that we actually have displayed many of the books in the, in, at the counter and in the room at 310. So you could go there, some books are for display, some are for sale. So, uh, so I will start by introducing um, two or uh, three books and then uh, we will have uh, Ariel and, and Dai, uh, Dai Jinghua to talk about their new books. So these are the books that, um, well, some of the books are produced by the global university. Some of the principles in our producing the books is that um, we can have a digital copy, which is uploaded onto the global university website for free downloads. So um, I will show you some of the other books that we produced, but now um, I would like to talk about um, uh, for, uh, two books that uh, Monthly Review Press has produced, and one which is um, well uh, uh, together with a global university. So the, uh, the what we are going to do is that uh, after one year, this book will be uploaded uh, 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 for free downloads on the global university website. But then it's always good to hold a copy. Eh? So if you like, you could go. So what I do is um, actually uh, John Foster was supposed to send me a link where he will be talking about this book, but because of some technical problems. So I will just be reading this out uh, so that you have an idea. And this is also for the interpreting, then it's for the benefit of our Chinese uh, participants and knowing what this book is about. So um, this book, uh, uh, it is a, a second volume of uh, the memoirs uh, of Samia Min, and he takes us on a journey to a dizzying array of countries, primarily in the Arab world, Africa, Asia, and Latin America, recounting in detail the stages of his ongoing dialogue over several decades with popular movements struggling for a better future. Along the way, we meet government leaders, activists in popular movements, and working people, both rural and urban. As in his many works over the years, the long revolution of the global south combines amidst astute theoretical analysis of the challenges confronting the world's oppressed peoples with militant action. In these final writings based on his life, Samia Min presents us with theoretical interventions, analysis of political conjunctures, and narration of, pol of personal experiences, uniquely combined with various cultures, political leaders, and militant intellectuals around the world. We also learn about the founding of the World Forum for Alternatives, which is an international network fostering the global convergence of grassroots social movements. Amin's reminiscences of travels to places too often overlooked by the world at large are a joy to read. We even catch a glimpse of some of his memorable and sometimes not so memorable culinary adventures. So this, uh, this is the book, um, uh, so, which is uh, published by the Monthly Review Press. And uh, uh, this other book has also come out uh, by the Monthly Review Press, also on, uh, which is a collection of uh, Samia Min's writings um, uh, that he has published uh, in Monthly Review. And these are some of his most significant essays written in the 21st century. In his introduction, Amis' friend and comrade, the Marxist philosopher Ajad Ahmad, pro he provides a comprehensive survey of Amin's life and path-breaking work. Ahmad also offers a contextual focus by which to read such stunningly astute pieces as revolution or decadence and contemporary imperialism. This is a loving and enlightening look at what the work of Samia Min has meant and will mean to millions of people the world over. And um, so a, a Global University has been publishing uh, various books and among them uh, they are uh, the, uh, the uh, so uh, uh, MPs um, and mem memoirs and some others. And then we also have this book also published by the Global University, 
The reason why uh, the authors didn't look for another publisher is because we can produce it in two weeks. <laughs> so we managed to produce this because we wanted to um, uh, catch up with uh, the 20th, 200th anniversary of Marx's birth. And so we managed to publish it very quickly. And I'll just read the, uh, what I wrote about this book. Uh, so this book is a timely intervention at a time when Capital Locine is pronouncing a death sentence to nature and humanity. It shows Marx's thinking is far from obsolete, even almost two centuries have elapsed. Instead, it can be used provokingly to shed light on the plight we are in, hence to lay down the conditions for collective work to revert our situation by turning the worst of times into the best of times. In that analysis about transition, the distinction between productive work by form and content is crucial. The authors deploy Marx's distinction between productive and unproductive capital for an understanding of the internal contradictory dynamics of the development of globalization, which leads to the tyranny of financial fictitious capital, where socially produced wealth is increasingly privatized and controlled in a few hands. The capitalist machine increasingly requires short-sightedness and depoliticized subjectivities of private individuals. Yet, it is exactly the failure of capitalism under the hegemony of U.S. petrodollars that gives emergence to other social formations for the production of a collective subject that can only be sustained in diversity and democratic practices for a new chapter of humanity. So this book is the 200 years uh, of Marx, uh, Capitalism in Decline, and it's produced by uh, Wim uh, uh, and uh, Wim uh, Dixon, Andre Picares, Walter Fomento, Remy Herrera, and Paolo Nakatani, uh, whom many of us here uh, know very well. So I would like to now pass uh, over to um, Ariel, uh, so maybe Ariel can tell us about this new book. So uh, three years ago, uh, myself and four comrades uh, decided to put a book together. And uh, it was finally born uh, last week. And it looks like this. It's called The Pluriverse, uh, a post-development dictionary. Uh, the meaning of the word pluriverse, of course, is uh, the opposite of universe or universalization, which is what the modernist development project has uh, tried to do uh, by... Uh, homogenizing uh, every culture on earth under the capitalist model, basically. Uh, so we were all, all of us uh, uh, keen alternative globalization activists for a number of years. And uh, we came together and we decided to collect together a uh, hundred visions from every culture in the world in terms of uh, their life affirming capacity. Um, and uh, to make these voices heard and to encourage a dialogue between the, the different perspectives and uh, generally to air uh, a reality, a um, uh, world within worlds that, that was being uh, uh, covered over, concreted over by, by development. Um, to, to take the blurb from the front uh, of the co of back cover, Pluriverse uh, contains over 100 essays on transformative initiatives and alternatives to the currently dominant process of globalised development, including its structural roots in modernity, capitalism, state domination and masculinist values. And uh, who we were? Well, it was Ashish Kotari from India, a Greenpeace India. Uh, myself, um, a sort of um, feminist writer about ecological questions for, for a couple of decades at least. Uh, Arturo Escobar, a very famous um, anthropologist who developed very powerful critique of development concept. Uh, Federico Di Maria, a young uh, economist in the degrowth movement based in the University of Barcelona. And uh, Alberto Acosta, uh, who some of you may remember uh, was the Minister for Mines in the government of Ecuador, which bravely decided to leave the oil in the soil at the request of the Sunni Indians, so to protect their national park at living areas. 
Yeah, so um, we set out, we, we asked uh, Wolfgang Sachs from Germany uh, to write a preface for us. And in a sense, the book was a, a celebration uh, and an honoring of Sachs's work because he wrote the first uh, book, um, The Development Dictionary, um, and uh, 25 years earlier. Uh, and then we organized the material in, in three different ways. Uh, the first section, uh, so it's not exactly a dictionary, it's a little bit more than a dictionary. The first section we invited a number of key intellectual activist scholars from each continent, and six scholars, people of the caliber of Vandana Shiva or Ma uh, Maristela Svampa from South America, Shiva from India, um, uh, Nimo Abassi from Africa and so on, uh, to, to write a short piece on what development had done to their regional area, to their continent. And then the second area, uh, the second section of the dictionary actually deals with false solutions to the problems of modernization. So uh, it, it deals with uh, reformist solutions, solutions which, which continue to universalize uh, the, the earth. So the, contained in that section were things like um, Bricks, an essay, a short essay on bricks. Each, each essay had about a thousand words. Uh, the circular economy as a false solution, eco modernization, uh, reproductive engineering, smart cities, uh, alternative currencies, um, the commons. Uh, oh, this was the section. This was the next section. Sorry, this is the section of transformative alternatives. So this is the big section, the main section of the dictionary. Uh, deep ecology, degrowth, uh, eco anarchism, food sovereignty, gift economy, Islamic ethics, uh, chaosse, liberation theology, and new matriarchies, peace women. We have Kinchi and we have. Sitsui and we have Kathy Gibson, all our contributors to the dictionary. Um, social ecology, the slow movement, uh, tribunal on the rights of nature, and uh, Zapatista autonomy, and many more. And and we end up with a kind of appendix to, uh, to this book, uh, which is an invitation to consider joining us in building a global tapestry of alternatives slowly by slowly, meeting together, very much like the work of the global university here, slowly by slowly exploring our commonalities and uh, our differences and uh, creating another world. There, another world is possible. So what to say? Uh, two more things. We, 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 if you buy the book, uh, and I urge you to buy, there are a few copies for sale here. Um, if you can't, uh, if you can't buy now, uh, I, I urge you to contact the Indian publisher in New Delhi because he'll give you a much better deal than the North American one for obvious reasons. Um, in the front of the book, we, we have about uh, 20 reviews from scholars from all over the world, and I, I'll just share with you a few of them because they're very positive. So this one is from uh, Eric uh, Schwingedau, I think that's how you say it. Um, at Manchester University, a geographer. He says, we're in deep trouble, but act as if we do not know. This book cuts through the impasse to chart a more ecologically sane, politically egalitarian and socially inclusive world. Uh, African, South African philosopher of uh, Ubuntu, Mogobi Ramose, he says, the post-development dictionary calls out the free market delusion that survival demands the use of money. Enough pecunia mania. Uh, Shiv Visvanathan, a very brilliant Indian uh, uh, academic, uh, the anthology brings together scholars with a deep grasp of philosophy, sociology, activism, and policy, a wild generosity of ideas. I, I really like that one. Mm -hmm. um, Frances Moore LaPay from the Small Planet Institute in the United States, she says, May the pluriverse open our minds so we can see what we could not see and choose consciously what serves life. And finally, from Edgardo Landa, uh, a sociologist from Venezuela, who says, Pluriverse, the book, 
will nurture the mutual recognition dialogues and convergences without which another world is hardly possible. So I thought I might just wrap up by giving you a taste of one of the extracts from within the book. Will we have time, Kinchi, to do this? Yeah? A little, a little bit? Okay. So I, it was a hard choice um, because they, uh, the texts are very assorted, some very pragmatic, some strongly political. This one is very passionate. It's by a judge from Ecuador on the Tribunal of the Rights of Nature. And he writes, human beings are the most insensitive and lethal species on the planet. We're going through the sixth extinction and we're not even paying attention to it. The changes affected by humans and their technologies are so rapid that species and nature are incapable of adapting to them. In this extinction, the human is both agent and victim. The International Tribunal for the Rights of Nature uh, was met for the first time in January 2014 in Quito, Ecuador. Those who appeared before the tribunal included natural subjects, the Gulf of Mexico, uh, Yasuni National Park, the Australian Great Barrier Coral Reef, uh, the Cordillera, and the subsoil where fracking is practiced in the USA, plus other defenders of nature's rights. The tribunal hears cases it meets regularly, such as Yasuni, where the Ecuadorian government has proposed, uh, or originally a proposed oil extraction in the middle of a rainforest. Uh, it suggests restorative measures according to the Universal Declaration of the Rights of Mother Earth, now embodied in the Ecuador Constitution, Article 70 to 73. Uh, tribunals are equipped with a technical secretariat consisting of activists, scientists, politicians, renowned academics, uh, and they have included uh, Cormac Cullinan, uh, Anudari uh, Anura Ada Mittal, uh, Brendan Mackey, Tom Goldtooth, Boaventure de Souza Santos, and others. Uh, we need an, a transition to a new type of law one that sees nature as an object, uh, not as an object uh, and physical resource, but one that for which nature is a subject. Contrary to the conventional civilizational right, this right is being called wild. This new conception of wild law involves new understanding and new purpose to create governance systems that simultaneously provide support for humans and the entire life community. This wild law recuperates the right to preserve and to receive what is wild in our hearts, other forms of being and doing what is right. It protects the wild and the freedom of living communities to self-regulate and it lends resonance to the creativity of diversity instead of imposing universal uniformity. Uh, 但是我没有想到坐到台上的时候我被那个这个封面所冲击哈因为第六次来南南论坛突然意识到以前每一次来的时候也是希望能和这些老人相会而去年五月他在北京在北京大学和我和我的学生一起讨论今天的世界和我们
几个代际的人们去战斗，呃，但是希望你们能够真的接过他们留下的工作，因为啊、呃，来北京前一天和几个美国朋友一起。呃，相聚，然后分手的时候，他们说为未来，为了未来。然后另外一个朋友也带一点玩笑的说，如果有叫未来这种东西的话，那么是不是拥有未来是个问题了？呃，那么能否拥有未来，在于你们，而不在于我们。好，那个关于这本书，呃。它是去年年底由美国杜克大学出版社出版的，呃，今年三月到美国做正式的新书发布的时候，得知卖的不错，呃，但是我真的跟建之说，我没有，我不大想在这儿谈这本书，是因为这是一本新书，但是当他和大家见面的时候，他已经老了，已经旧了，已经变成一本旧书了。呃，我不是客气，而且我觉得他作为我的一本新书，和大家见面的时候已经成了旧书，不光是因为美国学术书的出版周期太长，这是原因之一哈。三年前他一切都完成了，然后到三年之后他才能够面试，呃，但是这这不是重要的原因，重要的原因是在这个短短的几年之间，世界经历了太急剧的变化。而这个急剧的变化，比我们想象的更坏。所以，原本我觉得，对于大家来说，至少有一篇文章我还愿意跟大家分享，就是这本书的第一篇，所谓的 After Post Cold War。呃，这是我坚持使用的、我创造的、语法有错误的英语。呃，因为按照英语的，是母语的人们，他们都会把它翻译成 post post cold war， 可是我坚持用 after post cold war， 因为我想强调 after 这个时间的意义。冷战过去了，冷战终结了，呃，冷战甚至不再作为一种沉重的遗产和债务，存在在我们现实当中。在冷战、后冷战之后的世界上，资本甚至不再需要经过化妆，甚至不再需要一个身体，甚至不再需要一个人的形象，直接的统治了我们。呃，我原本。觉得这还是值得跟大家去分享的一篇文章，呃，但是现在，一边是后冷战之后成为了不可更改的现实，因为不再有一种整体的对抗资本主义的力量，但另一方面，新冷战也许已经拉开了序幕，而形成新冷冷战的对立的力量。没有任何一方都不是我我们所能认同的。那么，在这样的一个急剧变化或者说急剧恶化的世界面前，这本书对大家还有什么意义？我不知道了。那么，他我我唯一关于这本书，我唯一可以告诉大家的是，它是一本主要关于中国电影的书。呃，它是我一贯的研究方法，就是从电影文本进入，去看社会，去看人，去看政治和经济。呃，如果大家觉得我的这个方法论还有点意思的话，那么这本书也就还有一点意思。呃，而另外一个关于这本书可能还可以告诉大家的是。在这本书当中，我还尝试去寻找一种可能性，那么这种可能性就是文化的可能性。刚才呃高明讲了文化研究哈 （cultural studies）， 然后提到 Raymond Williams， 提到文化作为生活方式
呃，大概大家可以看到，在我们今天的现实生存当中，文化成为了各种各样的资本主义经济的标签、噱头、卖点，而我们所认知的文化已经被边缘到了不知道地球的外面、外太空。呃，但是，在这本书当中，我尝试去做一件也许不可能的事情，就是我们重新的去认知文化，我们重新的去创造文化，我们重新的去经由文化去争取未来。呃，不想说太空洞的话哈，但是我觉得。我们真的面临着一个问题，就是我相信资本主义的内在矛盾，使资本主义临近他们的终点了。但是，资本主义终结之后是什么？和一个有点夸张的说法，究竟是资本主义的终结，还是人类的终结？是个问题。呃，当然，我们希望终结资本主义。我们希望终结资本主义，是因为我们不希望资本主义终结了人类。但是我们该怎么办？在我们所有参与的小小的、呃艰难的，但是不放弃的努力当中，呃，有没有一种汇聚起来的可能性？有没有一种从这种汇聚起来的可能性去争取人类的未来？当然，必须告诉大家，这些思考并不能体现在这本小书当中。但是，这本小书当中的每一篇，呃，包含了和你们所做的一样的小小的努力。所以，真的，这是一本旧书。希望大家觉得它有意义。说完了。Thank you.、Um, so, uh, actually, um, well, the global university started publishing、uh, its own books, and so that was one of the first ones, the Bandung at sixty. And then we started to、uh, publish.、Uh, we are hoping also to publish a series of books, which would be on the stories or on the writings of、uh, prominent intellectuals. So that,、um, that、uh, in that series, the first one to come out was MP's book, and we、uh, had MP with us last year. Uh, to talk about、uh, his idea of the Ruben、um, uh, alternatives, and the second book we produced was、um, uh, uh, Francois Houtard's book.、Uh, this is a very thick one, and so、uh, the, the actually this English edition came before the Spanish edition because we wanted to launch it in last year's、uh, uh, uh, South South Forum, and we are actually. Uh, about to to finish on the book of, of Muto's uh, <laughs> uh, lives,、um, and actually Muto came here to Lingnan for、uh, two, about、uh, for two full weeks, when we did、uh, interviews with him for five to six hours every day, and we had the long long transcripts. But then we will be working with Muto to produce uh, his um, his book. And、uh, we also had one with Wentejun and others. So we hope that next year, when you come for the South South Forum, we will be having book launch of other books. Well, um, uh, well, uh, just uh, just some time ago, Marta Hanika left us, and、uh, well, we remember her with、uh, fondness. And she's a great thinker and a great、uh, practitioner. She had worked also a lot on trying to facilitate exchanges between China and.、Uh, Venezuela and Cuba, and、uh, so I don't know whether we can also publish、uh, her writings. 
And um, so now we would like to uh, just show you uh, the video, uh, video we put together on Sambia Min. Uh, he, 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 he died last year uh, on August the 12th uh, in Paris. And we have, have collected some of his photos and we would like to show this to you. It is uh, 13 minutes. So maybe we can...
some very happy uh, moments in my life, taking in order of the age. One was my childhood. I was very fortunate, not, not in, in a material way, but morally with my uh, father and mother, but more even my grandfather and my grandmother, who played a crucial role in my political awareness. Um, Second was when I met Isabel. Uh, it was very quick and we came very quickly to understand that we would, we would continue for life, which is the case. Huh? Uh, it was a very pleasant moment. I had uh, 
politically very pleasant move, mo moments. I think I shall always remember the deep uh, uh, pleasure, more than pleasure, uh, which the victory of uh, the Chinese Liberation Army uh, in 1949, when it moved into Beijing, and later in the 50s when it moved south, I was terribly happy. I was happy to the extent that I was naive enough to think that this is the end of capitalism. It will continue to India, to Middle East, to Africa. <laughs> we'll do the same with the same victory. It was naive, but it was still a, a big, uh, big... Uh, uh, but I had uh, also very sad uh, 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 moments in my life. The saddest is the loss of my daughter. Uh, that is uh, the most terrific um, uh, moment of my life. Um, also, I was very unhappy when the Soviet Union broke down. I was afraid of that since long time. Uh, I was afraid of that. But I kept the hope long time that uh, they could find a, a solution center left, perhaps a solution as the Chinese, as less bad than the f full breakdown and the breaking down of the Soviet Union in those uh, silly independent countries, uh, to me is a, a historical defeat. Hmm? Uh, but we bear uh, communism, historical communism, historical Marxism has a responsibility in that a major responsibility in that. I hope that in the future we'll have some good news. So, uh, well, thank you very much. Uh, so, to, the music is uh, by Erebus, uh, who is interpreting her for you, has been interpreting for you. And uh, so we will be, we will finish here for today. And then again.